Live from Canton, Ohio, it's the Phil and Eric Show! Watching a movie. That's Woo. right. We've That's got right. a great show for you here tonight, folks. We've got. Well, it's not about a great movie, but it's again, a movie. It's a movie. Yeah. So if you want to watch a movie, we got a movie That's tonight. Right. It's called Werewolf in a Girl's Dormitory. Really? And a, a <laughs> girl's dormitory. Ooh, we got some you. women. All you, right. You would think by the name yes. of this movie, uh, folks. Let me just warn you. It's, we didn't do it tonight. Is not an Ohio cut. We're just no. bringing you the movie tonight. Yes, that's right. It's so bad but, we can't oh, even save this movie. It's so this, bad. It is. I, I'll let you judge for yourself. That's right. But folks, you're in for a good one. That's right. You got good women in sleep. there. Well, there are by definition right. women. And there's a dormitory. I believe it's by definition a dormitory. And they're going to school. They're going to school you. I, I don't want to. Bad movie. I don't want to. I don't want to ruin it more than that, that's for right. you folks, because. But anyway, we got some good skits for you skits, tonight. Yes. I think you got some trivia coming up. That's right. We got some trivia. Uh, we're we're gonna have all kinds of good stuff. That's right. And again, we're on the road to Gallardi Fest. Gallardi Fest so, coming up. Woo! Gallardi Fest right. 2014 at La Villa Party Ooh, Center. That's in a pretty good place. Parma, Ohio. Parma. Right next door to Parma. But yeah, it's a great place. That's right. Look for it this year. Wait, there's a knock on the phone. There's a knocking on the phone. Get the phone. There's a knocking on the phone. Let me see. There it says, "Come with me." Hello. Hello. You want us there at Glardy Fest? Coming in October? We're there. All right, we'll be there. there All go. right, we'll be there. All right. All right. Hey, we better get to this movie now. We better get to These this people movie. are begging for the movie They're to start. Just, they love it. They're out there. They're saying, we want it, we want it, we want it. But All right, wake him up. Go up, wake him up. Oh, go, we're taking go. taking act one of Werewolf and a, and a girl's story. Right now. And, nah. and we'll be back Woo. after this. Woo. Yes, who are you? What do you want? I'm Julian Olcott. The director is expecting me. Enter, please. Thank you. Be calm. Wolf doesn't bother anyone. I'm Walter the caretaker. I'm pleased to meet you. The studio of the director is in front of that court at the left. Down there in front? At the left. Give me a suitcase. Thank I'll you take it. very much. It's a pleasure for you, too, isn't it, teacher? <laughs> oh, oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. Quickly, please take her to the infirmary and make room so that she can get some air. Look, she can't even look at a new man without fainting dead away. <laughs> I'm sure she's pretending. That one? I've known that one for a long time, way before she faked it. Mary has a marvelous ability for always being in trouble. <laughs> Love has never killed anyone. She's just found a way to make it pay plenty for her. Beautiful. Uh, I don't think that's the reason she did it. Then what do you think it is? Only a man can make Mary pass out. She's bound to recover in the infirmary so she can go out tonight. <laughs>
You are Julian Alcott, sir? Yes, I am. I am Leonore McDonald. I'm very glad to know you. The director is expecting you. Thank you. Julian Alcott, correct? Yes, that's right. How do you do? Pleasure. Dr. Benson told me to see you, and here Dr. I am. Dr. Benson is an old friend. He wrote to me. I've been expecting you. Sit down, please. Thank you. There's... There's something I should tell you. Please, sit down, doctor. Yes, Dr. Alcott. I know everything. Benson explained it to me. And he also said you were acting in good faith. That's very kind of you. You know the court of law has found me to be innocent. I know. So here you'll just be Professor Julian Orcutt, and the past shall be of no importance. Thank you. It's very good of you. You don't have to thank me. Thank our mutual friend, Dr. Benson. I hope you'll be comfortable here. Our institute is not a house of punishment. The girls are given a chance here by the generosity of our benefactors. Without this institute, the majority of them would be in some state reformatory. We are trying to give them work and an education and put them back on the right road. No one is ill-treated here, but your job will not be an easy one. Very good. I shall do my best because it's also important to me to find myself. Surely, the past can become a nightmare unless we can free ourselves of it. Uh, sir, while I was coming here, I saw a girl who had just fainted. Oh, that. That's Mary Smith. Don't be concerned because she's just coming off age. <laughs> I hope the future will be better. Yes. But you must remember that here you are not a doctor anymore, but just a professor of science. Of course. I won't forget. If you'll come alone, I'll show you your quarters. Ah, thank you very much. This way, please, Professor. Sandy. The other day, the farmers had to kill two of them. The people are going mad with fear. If I were Mary, I would be frightened. Look there. Mary! She means trouble, so why bother? It's better to forget her. Let her go if she wants to. Look. But why doesn't she try to stop her? She's the one who doesn't want to be seen. Funny if she had a lover. A lover? And who could it possibly be? Maybe it's that new professor that just arrived here today. <laughs> if it is, I can understand that he's pretty good looking. Mm, any man looks good to you. You should never be here at night. 
Let me go. Don't touch me, pig. You've got your money. Let me go, or tomorrow I'll spill everything. About you and about him. Let me go. Get here, so you'll be sorry. <laughs> I want you in one piece. <clears throat> I came here only because of the promise you made. Leave me alone. I came here because I want something. What is it you want now? But I've given you everything. And so who needs it if I have to stay walled in here? Make your promise good to get me out. You wanted a little love on the sly? Then find me a way out of this pig pen. Tomorrow night, do you hear? Tomorrow night. No, Mary. You know very well the court has sentenced you. So only the court can possibly free you, Mary. My body for a middle-aged oversex phonier. Now you expect to get off the hook. No, you don't. Aren't you forgetting, Mary, that you have the letters? The letters. When you give them to me, I'll free you. They're burned. Remember, they're important proof. Very important. So careful. No, wait. Something can be done. Wait. You won't keep me waiting. Or tomorrow you're finished at this school. Mary, wait. Wait. I'll think of something. Tonight's movie, I told you, is bad out there. Oh, my goodness. It's stinker. Stinker. I, I, it's like, well, yeah. 
But anyway, again, we're on the road to Gilardi Fest. And Gilardi so we're Fest. having a good, good time. Right. We're building up the old content out there on the Phil and Eric right. Show at the Phil and Eric Show. Dot com. We're every night. It's Saturday night. We're, we're there watching a movie. movie. So we, right. right now, what we got, Philly D. We got, why don't you hit him up with some trivia? That's right. right. We got some trivia. Some trivia. That's right. And let me tell you, folks, this yes. one's outside the box. Yeah, that's right. Outside the box. It's, uh, it's way it's over there. there. All so. right. Now, listen up. Yes. All right. Back in the 1940s, we had Lon Chaney Jr., the son of the great Lon Chaney, found yes. the opera. Yes. And he played the Wolfman. The Wolfman. All right. I'll tell you, that was a movie. That was a good movie, right. by the way. Good movie. Now, they did a ton of movies featuring Wolf. Dracula, yeah. the Wolfman, and a character by the name of Frankenstein. Well, there was a movie out called Frankenstein Meets the Wolfman. Can you yes, I that? remember that one. Yeah. Kind of yeah. like them Godzilla yeah. movies yeah. with Godzilla versus Mothra, but this was the Mothra. Universal Monsters. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Hero. Go. All right. But anyways, can you answer this for us? I can answer. Who played the Frankenstein monster in the film Frankenstein meets the Wolfman? And he is a very popular actor back in the day, I and he you. actually played a big part in the Phil and Eric show. I was going to say, that's very good. That's a big hint right there, folks. Yes. He's a, one of our main uh, stables of actors. That's Maybe right. Actors and, I don't know, whatever. Stables yes, of horses. That's, yeah, <laughs> horses. Soup. I don't That's know right. what it is. <laughs> but anyway, so you guys, all right, so who played, who played? the Frankenstein's monster in Frankenstein Meets the right. Wolfman? And here's another clue. Here's another clue. He was offered the role to play it in, I believe, 1931 yes. for the Frankenstein movie, but he turned it down. And I think I gave too much, but Boom. in the next break, next we break. will give you the answer to the trivia. So I'll tell you what, we're gonna take right. you right now into a great skit. That's right. Back into act two, two. of Werewolf of the Gold. Oh, Gold there's Gold. actually an act two. Oh, well, it's gonna be, there's a couple of acts. No. I'm sorry. And then right back here for the answer. So we'll see you back here real soon, folks. Woo! Woo! Hey, Bob. Hey, Tim, what's going on, there? Ah, bud? Hey, I'm doing all right. Hey, hey, since we got this uh, yeah. break down here at the uh, Atlanta airport. Now, man, that it's, sucks, man. And again, like I said, we're down here at the Atlanta airport. Yeah. But I heard you can drink jet fuel. Jet fuel? Jet fuel, man. Wow. You can get a buzz on some jet fuel. Buzz? A buzz on some what jet fuel. What about hangover? I mean, from what I heard, you ain't getting no hangover either. You getting no hangover? You ain't getting no hangover. Why are you? Yeah, man. So, I'll, I'll tell you what, man. I'm going to drink me up some jet Look at that. Ooh, it smells pretty yeah. nice, yeah, sir. Yeah, that's nice. that's just good. I'll tell you what, we'll, we'll, I'll check this out. You go do and that. We'll, we'll drink some jet fuel. All right. And I'll let you know how it goes. Well, you do All that. All right, bro. All right, bro. You go. Later. All right, bye now. Hey, Tim. Yeah, Bob. What's going on, good man? Oh, no, man. I'm feeling good. So how was that jet fuel? How was that tasty stuff, eh? I tell you what, that was pretty good stuff. Really? Yeah. Wow, and you did not have any after effects, no uh, uh, hangovers? Nope, not a hangover in sight. Really? That sounds fantastic! But let me tell you, there is one side effect. Really? What? Well, have you farted yet? No, sir, Bob. Because I'm calling you from Detroit. <laughs> oh, no!
Sheena. 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 You really are corrupt, Alfred. No. It's not about her again. Not this time. It's now something horrible, Sheena. I saw. You're a beast, not a man, my dear, so go to the devil. I haven't done anything. I haven't done anything. I'm not with that girl anymore, it's true. She's blackmailing me. The letters. The letters. Yesterday I wrote a letter to her that can be a disgrace to me. You're not only thoroughly miserable, Alfred, you're without a doubt a pitiful imbecile. But I didn't sign them, never. They can't possibly suspect they're mine. You fool! How far do you think you would go if everyone knew what you really are, Sir Alfred Weitzman? I know it, Sheena. You're right. Miss Schultz, is it all right, please, to go in there? I want to see her. No, no, it's not possible. Take this, distribute. My report from the coroner. He said the girl was assaulted by wolves and she died as a result of the injuries inflicted. But she could have had a meeting with a man a little before her death. I don't believe it could have been the wolves. Hmm. A girl who wanders out at night into the forest. And Professor, she was alone, mind you. Not to mention the probable rendezvous with someone could very easily have been attacked by wolves. Poor girl. It's a terrible disgrace to be destroyed after years of work. I fear that the good name of our institute will be compromised. We can't be concerned about the institute's good name. In a case like this, sir. Here's Sir Alfred Whiteman. Sir Alfred, something horrible has happened. Sir Alfred, I believe you know this girl. Yes. Yes. I believe I've seen her, of course, at some time. May I leave now, please? What has occurred has upset me very much. Excuse me. Sir Alfred, will you join us, sir, for a minute or so, for I have to complete my report? Purely a formality, of course. Soon we can finish in a few minutes. I can sympathize with you, but I can't avoid the formalities. Of course.
Priscilla, what are you doing here? You'll be late to your next study hall. You must go quickly. Why are you waiting? I thought I'd forgotten my notebook, Professor. Walter is the director in his office. I have to see him immediately. Why do you have to see him? It's personal. None of your business. It would be profitable to get together with me just a little. Give me a chance. I don't bargain with your kind. Well, now I'm finished. We'll soften the news in all of the papers as you asked, sir. You're very generous, Inspector, and I should like to thank you in the name of the Council of the Institute. It's my pleasure, Mr. sir. Mr. Swift, Alfred. excuse me. Yes? One of the girls would like to speak to you. Make her wait for me. You shall have no reason to worry. I'll increase the supervision over the girls. There's no need to change this institute into a prison, or we might as well leave the girls in a state reformatory. Please don't worry, Sir Alfred. I know well how far I can go. Yes? What can I do for you? Mr. Swift, I found something of Mary's. What's that? Sit down. Tell me everything. This morning by post, there arrived a letter for Mary. Yes? I opened it. There were only a few words. Mary is blackmailing someone. And in this letter, they're threatening her. From whom is this letter? There isn't any name. Mary and blackmail. May I see the letter? No, I left it in the dresser in the dormitory. We shall have to call back the inspector. Tommy, call the inspector and ask him to come over as soon as possible. The letter has no connection with the death of Mary. However, we cannot ignore it. No, no, a blackmailer is not an assassin. They tell me they've legally established that she was torn up by an animal. But we're not very certain you have told us the truth. The letters are here. I only said that someone was blackmailing Mary. Let's see them. Well, have they just vanished? But they were here. I put them here a few minutes ago. What do you hope to gain with this bad hoax, girl? But let's not waste energy by telling lies and by alarming us. I have fair grounds to arrest you. Excuse me, Director. Uh, you must believe me, Mr. Swift. It was here. Who could have taken it? Whoever did must have known that I left the Don't letter. Don't be malicious and accuse your companions just because you can't deliver this letter. You are the only one who has seen this letter, and we have to believe your words. And my report doesn't count at all for you. It's not for me. It's the police who need the facts. You better return now. I understand that you're upset about the death of your friend. However, I cannot excuse your conduct. Mary was just assassinated. No one will convince me she was torn up by wolves. These globules, which are red, are presented in the form of minuscule disks that are biconcave. And there are many of them. There are around five million in each millimeter of blood. They're very elastic, possessing the ability of varying their form. Beside elongation, which we discussed earlier... You can't be certain can about that. What connection could he possibly have with the letter? Sections of the body which he arrived only a few days ago. Possibly he's been living at Brinsville for many months. 
Here is the charge representing the body and blood. Good. We'll leave this lesson as it is for today and pick it up on Tuesday. Please go now. Done. You want to come in? No, I want to speak to the professor. Okay. Professor, excuse me. What do you want, Priscilla? I want to speak to you a moment. But of course. Something you need to know? Have you seen Mary's body? Yes. Why didn't I and the other girls get a chance to see it before the burial? Maybe it's better that you remember her the way you last saw her. You know the story of the wolves. What do you mean? But those scratches, those wounds, were they made by a wolf? To my knowledge, this has not yet been confirmed. And I don't have any actual reason to doubt it. Why did you come to instruct here? You're not from Brinsville. No, from another town. And I didn't choose it, this place. It was my destiny, not my ambition to accept. Wish something else right now? No, I felt you might know something about the death of Mary, but I see you won't tell me anything. And now, back to the Phil and Air show. Hey! Back again! That's right! In the saddle again! Back in the saddle. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey! Hey! hey. That's copyrighted. Ah, oh, I didn't say nothing. All oh, right. Back in my chair again. But anyway. That's right. Tell you That's what, a folks. good song for the Hitman. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh, man. With that guitar, man. We got a good skit coming up with the Hitman, we and he's in the bathroom. Again with the bathroom? Or is he in no, another? No, 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 no. Or he's, is he's, he drunk? He's a, who knows where he's at. All right, man. who cares? Right Hitman's now. always somewhere else. We got some trivia. Doing That's something. Some we got the answer right. to the trivia, because I know all y'all were sitting on the edge of your seat. They were. It's, that it's edge edge right over there. Yeah. Yeah, edge we could see through your computer screens or your TV screens, depending on where you're watching us at. Depending on where. Where you're watching us at, we, we got the answer real. We got eyes. Look so, at these glasses. They, they got special lenses. Billy D. Don't let them wait, wait anymore. All What's right. the answer to who played the Frankenstein's monster in Frankenstein meets the Wolfman? Well, the answer to that one is the late, great Bella Lugosi. Bella! Yeah, Bella. He hey, was Bella. actually... Yeah, I think... Was he Italian? No, 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 no. He really wasn't. Okay, he actually appeared in The Corpse Vanishes. Corpse Vanishes. And a future to be movie that we're going to play called Scared, Scared to, death. to Death. And That's then we right. just we just showed One Body Too Many. One Body Too Many, So yeah. we got all kinds of good stuff with Bela Lugosi. Bela Lugosi. And even more and more to come. We got White Zombie on the, in the, on the horizon. All kinds now, of Now, can you stuff. believe he turned down the Frankenstein because he had no speaking part. Yeah. But then, years later, when his career started to go downhill, guess what role he played? It's amazing what'll happen when you run out of money. Yeah, Just you became us. Frankenstein. That's right. <laughs> broke. We broke. So I'll tell you what, folks. I don't think we're hey. fixed. I hate you. We can but you know what? I think we us. should go right now to the Hitman skit. All right, we'll, we'll take you on to That's a right. Hitman skit. I'm sure the Hitman will take us somewhere. And somewhere right now. And I'm going to play us a tune. Oh, no. Please don't play the tune. We'll what? be back. What? 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 Take us to the Hitman right what? now. I'm going to play it. All right. Y'all ready to rock? Hell yes. Y'all ready to roll? Ooh. Here we go. We have a special thing on the menu. Oh, baby, baby, baby. And I got something for you. It's called Crocker Hot Potatoes. Hot Potatoes, Crocker Hot Potatoes in the oven tonight. Ooh, Crocker. Boo! Oh. 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 What's the next? Aren't you supposed to actually hit the drums? How's that? Okay, here we go. Okay, I'm gonna do it this time. You ready? No. no. All right, here we go. I want a crock of hot potatoes in my oven tonight, baby, baby, baby. Ooh, hot potatoes in my oven in the kitchen, and don't be snitching on me. What the heck is this? You suck! Suck? What are you talking about? I'm the best drummer of all time.
said, look, Peter Chris has nothing on me. All right, now you better be quiet before I start singing again. Are you ready? No more singing. I'm going to sing. You suck. Here we go. One more time. Ready? One, two. Everybody leave. Everybody sing with me. Hitman's going to do this song. Whatever, I, whatever. What is this song called again? You don't even know your own song. Oh, a crock of hot potatoes. A crock of hot potatoes in the onion. Oh, baby. Give me some more. I'm going to have some more for you. It's the same as another. This one can make it. Force it. There they are. Take it. Mary, I need you and you can have anything you want, but I must see you. And please reply very quickly in person. I embrace you, my love. Not even signed. And also this one. Read it. Read it. No, no, not yet. No one must ever see this because I know which one murdered Mary. I know the man. Yes. <laughs> it's very difficult to understand, but now that you've been with us here for a week, what's your impression? Well, I don't think these girls are any more difficult than others of their age. Perhaps you're right, but these have found the bitterness of life much too early. Yes, I must agree with you, even without knowing them as well as you do. Tell me, that one, for instance, what's she done? Why is she here? She was convicted of attempted homicide. She was living with that poor Mary in town. One night a sailor was trying to beat Mary, almost strangled her. Then Priscilla, defending her friend, almost killed the sailor. Now I understand. That's why the news of Mary's sudden death touched her so deeply. Yes. As the girls are alone here, a friendship like this can sometimes be their only consolation. And where's the hard cash? He'll pay you after. Maybe he'll give you more because he likes you. I? Yes, you. I do believe that money makes a person do anything, don't you? It's tough for a girl to resist a fancy notion of cash when she needs it, hmm? Let's go. Watch the house well, Wolf. Quickly, we can't afford to be seen by anybody. Come on, we haven't far to go.
the peace fighting among themselves, Priscilla. Come on. where they found Mary. How would I know? Come on. He's expecting you. Don't be afraid. You're Sheena Whiteman. You expected to find my <coughs> husband, am I right? <coughs> Stop it. Take this. This is so you would have a worthwhile reason for coming here. To me, you are another common slut just like all the others. And as of now, it's finished between you and my husband. Whiteman. It was your husband. Now it's clear to me. What's clear to you, you little tart? You're all alike. You're all ready to sell yourselves. Yes, but not to be killed. Your husband has killed Mary Smith because she received this. No. My husband is perhaps a philanderer, but he's not an assassin. Then I'll explain all this to the police. I warn you, girl. You'd better not be foolish or I'll be forced to appeal to the dog. That wouldn't help you at all. All the other letters are securely hidden, in case they find me like my friend, attacked by the wolves. Where are the other letters? Do you have them? Those letters will be delivered to the police. I only want to know who's written them. Oh, that's the reason you came here. Yes, that's the reason, even if you don't believe me. Sit down. I believe you, but also you must listen to me. For a long time, I've been watching my husband. He's a strange man. He's a sadist. Everyone else believes he's a respectable person. And he's not even faithful. It's true. It's true the other night he had an appointment with that Mary. I followed him, intending to interrupt them and put an end to it once and for all. They met each other, and when Alfred left her, I know that girl was alive. Still living. But suddenly, there occurred something horrible. It wasn't my husband who killed your friend, and it was not the wolves. There was a moon. I saw that the assassin didn't run away immediately. He remained in almost a contortion for some moments on the bridge, before going. And it was then that I was able to recognize him. <gasps> Who's there? Where? Over there. There was someone at the window. Oh, it was that caretaker who brought you here. Who do you say is the murderer? I don't want to tell you. 
Not now, anyway. It's better that you keep your nose out of this filthy mess. The letters and all the rest. Also that poor girl. Her name would be covered with mud. Let her rest in peace. But she was assassinated. Another dirty scandal would be the final ruin of us all and certainly wouldn't bring back to life your Mary. Do you still love your husband? Yes. To the point of killing one of his lovers? <gasps> I? Why? What sort of a person do you think I am? The dogs. You didn't say anything to them. If they'd find me killed by them, they'd believe it was the wolves. You are really stupid. I've been foolish to confide in you. Calm down. What are you doing here at this hour? Maybe I should ask you the same thing. But I... I can respond to that. I'm fixing traps to free the forest from the wolves. In a certain sense, we were doing the same thing. What do you have to tell? Oh, nothing. Were you the one that was following me, Professor? No. Absolutely. Why? I don't know. It seemed like someone was following me. Come on, I think I'd better go back with you to the Institute. I'm certainly safer going with you than going alone. Priscilla, I'm sorry, but... I have to make a report. You were told not to come here. Make it. You don't have to worry about me. You're a strange girl. Is that a compliment? Oh, perhaps. Here on the Phil and Eric show, we got ourselves some DVDs. DVD. That's right. DVDs. They're going to be on sale at the Glarty Fest. Fest. That's right. And this one is special. It is called Crypt, Crypt of, of the, the Living, Living Dead. Dead. This is in a special Ooh. Ohio cut right here. It's a there you go. Special, special. And then Ohio on the back, cut. of course, you have a nice promo picture of us all together. All right. That's right. Including uh, Mr. Rob Daniels, That's the right. creator of Three Guys in a Flashlight. Flashlight. Now go ahead and tell them about Glarty Fest. Glarty Fest. 2014. Let me right. tell you, folks, it's going to be fantastic. La Villa Party Center, That's right. right next door to Parma, Ohio. Parma! Oh, it's, this is show going They're going to have, this year, they're going to have, it falls on October 31st on Halloween. Halloween. Get your costumes, oh, kitties! There are going to be right. adult costume uh, right. contests, kitty costume contests. Right. There's going to be shock theaters shock always. Theater. There's 
going to be a new talent time. Ooh, a new so talent get your, time. So get to GalartiFest.com. Right. Do it right get now. Your, get your audition tape into them because right. it's going to be fantastic. And then Philly D and I are going to be there. So yep. I tell you what, you if, they, if you didn't make it up on the stage, come on over to our booth and we'll have ourselves a no talent time That's right, right there And we can show Fest. you what kind of lack of talent you really have. That's Look right. Show get yourself your a lack book. of talent. This is a really good book called Big Chuck's... Uh, 40 years of TV. I tell you what, yes, Thank right. Thank you very much. So we got all kinds of fun stuff coming at you on this Road to Gallardi Fest. And with these DVDs, these special Ohio cuts, you will get a replica poster of the original movie. Just look a little bit, little, little yes, tiny right. poster. And we will autograph it for you, too. To we will even ruin it for you with an autograph. Right. I mean, make it better. And I you know, know what? Yeah. In, in 10 years, it'll still be worth... Ten cent. If you the autograph. If you recycle the paper, you might it'll be worth the paper that it's written on. Yeah, that's right. You might get a quarter for it. <laughs> All right. So we got Woo! some hey, good no, stuff. No. I hate to tell you, folks, but we got to take you back to the movie. Oh, man, this is gonna be at oh, four. We're almost there. Please. We're almost there. I hope so. We're gonna accelerate. We're gonna pump the. Uh, you know, don't pump the brakes. Don't hit the brakes. That's just right. Boom. Don't just, stop it. Go. Go. Just, just get do it. it. Just get it. Get it done. Get it. So get it we'll done. take you right now into another great skit. And then yes. right back to the movie. And then come on back here, yes. folks. We got more for you. That's right. Right here on the Phil and Eric Show. We're every night. night. It's Saturday, Saturday night. When, when you're watching, watching the movie. movie. We'll Woo! Woo! Break it down. Now, Pappy. Yes, Mammy? I'm going to get up and go to the kitchen. Yeah. I'm going to make something to eat. You want something? Yeah. Okay, what you want? I want some ice cream. You want what? Me? Ice cream. Ice cream. Okay, you want some ice cream. Okay, I'll be hey, back. Hey, you better write it down. I, me... I don't need to write down ice cream. I can remember well, that. Well, I want some other stuff along with it. Okay, what you want? I want some chocolate syrup on it. Chocolate syrup? And I want some sprinkles. Some sprinkles. And I want some nuts. You better chop down some good nuts, too, woman. <laughs> want some nuts. Yeah, right. some nuts. Some crunchy, bunchy nuts. All right, so you want some ice cream. That's right. You want some chocolate syrup. Yeah. Some sprinkles. Sprinkles. And you want nuts. Yeah, nice and firm oh. nuts. Firm nuts. All right. I'll, I'll be back, Pam. You better Wait remember. Back. I'll be back. I'm going to write this down. Yeah, woman. Yeah, Pappy. Here's your bacon and your eggs and your hash browns. You know, I wanted... You did it all wrong. I wanted my egg scrambled. <laughs> Get out of here, Grammy. Can't do anything. You're too pessimistic. Even if life is hard, it's worthwhile living it. You must believe in something. Don't be afraid. It's only a wolf that must have just fallen into one of my traps. You have to go? Yes. Excuse me, it's really necessary. You know, the wolves know how to free themselves and escape with a broken foot. Oh. Don't be worried. I'm almost there already. Professor? Yes? Mm, uh, the report? Don't worry about it. I won't say anything to anybody about it this time. I won't even ask you what you were doing out at this hour. You see? I have faith in you. Thank you. Priscilla.
Sheena was all to me. A companion both good and kind and devoted. a monster, one of the girls from the Institute, and she was saved by a dog. One of the girls saw this. She said his right arm was torn open by the dog. The police have to inspect each and every man in these... Absolutely. are asleep here, we'll have to try and find it ourselves. Certainly. Bronzeville will not lay down. We'll find him. Yes, we'd better act before he strikes the game. We don't want him to get hold of one of our children. The sheriff. Infirmary. The dresser wouldn't find anything. You must. You have to find them. If I don't recover those letters, I cannot rest. Look at that man. His right arm isn't functioning. He's the caretaker of the Institute. Sir Alfred. The girl was attacked right in the vicinity of the guardhouse. Certainly it's him. Come on, what are we waiting for? Careful. Don't move. Get out of here. He must account for what he has done. Stop it! You're all going mad. Let go of that knife. Walter, nobody is going to do you any harm. Now let him pass through. The man's hands. Look, men. Look at his Look, hand. Men. This man has no scar on his hand. His hand has been like this since he was born. Are we leaving? Step aside. Come on. Come on, go on and sit down. Nothing is happening. Get going, boys. What were you doing with Sir Alfred? Nothing, Dr. Sweat. Why? Return to the Institute. These people could do you great harm. Yes, sir. troubling you? Tell me why. You must have faith in me, Priscilla. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know that you can trust me. Finally. They wouldn't even let me in here. They told me I mustn't stay long. Oh, excuse me. I'm not disturbing you. No. I was just telling the professor how very pleased I am to see him. Priscilla. But at this point, it's better to say it all. <laughs> right, Professor? Oh. 
Sir Alfred, we've been risking our reputation for him. Just what am I to do? This whole story repulses me. In saving him, you saved the reputation of the Institute. Ah. Come in. Sandy, what is it? I must speak to you. It's something terrible. Well, what is it? So speak. I know who the monster is. What's that? Julian Alcott, the professor of science. He's a badly damaged arm. This is not enough proof to even mention. Mary was murdered the night of his arrival. It's him and he's in the infirmary with Priscilla talking to... Don't call Professor Alcott now. And don't tell anyone what you just said to me. But I... Listen, if your suspicions are correct, I shall call the police. Now go ahead. Tommy, call Professor Alcott immediately. I cannot tell you too often, but I must have those letters. With pleasure, Sir Alfred. If the letters are still here in the Institute, I'll find them. Good. You wanted to see me, sir? Yes. What, in your opinion, happened in the woods? Well, I believe it has to do with a lycanthropist. In other words, a sort of werewolf. Exactly. Please explain this to me further. What is this? An interrogation? Better to tell me than the police, don't you think? Yes, of course. Well, you know of my career as a doctor. It was terminated by a tragic incident. I was working for Dr. Benson at the mental hospital for the criminally insane. There was a girl. She was accused of homicide. But the poor girl could not absolutely recall killing anyone. She seemed perfectly normal. I must add, I was in love with her. Continue, please. In a full moon, she would behave in a very strange way. She would lose complete control of herself and transform absolutely. And her face was like a beast's. Professionally, I wanted to try to help her. And after a certain time, I discovered a temporary antidote. And it's so difficult, actually, without my using the medical terms to explain I've always been interested in medicine, and I think I could follow you. The pituitary gland controls the function of the hormones, influencing the sexual organs and the thyroid. And as a direct reaction, it can cause a psychophysical transformation. My colleagues refuted this theory of mine, and I had proven it unequivocally. For example, at every lunar cycle, the pituitary gland acts strangely and becomes enlarged at the start of the transformation. Our psychocontrols upset the balance of the neuroglandular system, causing incredible distortions in the skin, hair, and teeth. In this state, the patient cannot be saved. I was successful with the extract of the brain of a wolf while I was experimenting on her. One night, she gave herself an overdose. Perhaps I made it too strong. And the police then accused me of killing her. Do you want to know more? In observing the body of Mary, did you feel the crime was committed by lycanthropus? Yes. I'm almost sure about it. I continued my studies in this matter. And this led you to other discoveries. Is it possible to rid yourself completely? I don't know. But that's not of importance anymore. Since I've been here, I've been trying to capture a wolf to extract his glands. They're not rare in our forests. But tell me, Professor, have you ever experimented on yourself? Once. I had to find out what it would be like for a normal human being. It was impossible to observe myself. Would you mind showing me your right arm? No, 
Of course not. Yes, it's hurt. But I did not attack Priscilla. A strange coincidence, don't you think? Before you arrived, there never was any talk about monsters in this town. Then you think that I'm... Professor, the one? you said yourself that a person can be completely out of control during a crisis. How much does he remember afterwards? Nothing. Absolutely nothing. Not even one sign remains of it. I assure you that this is what happens. Anyway, I must assure you of one thing. I hurt myself accidentally. Professor, I want to believe every word of it, though it may not appear that way. But I advise you, however, to take great care. Perhaps you had better discontinue your experiment. Absolutely not. Well, I can't. The life of a human being may depend on it. And who might this be? I don't know. You asked me to tell you about a lycanthropist. His sickness must have satisfaction. In the next transformation, he'll try again. And you believe that if you manage to find a definite antidote, you'll probably save the life of that person. Then you know who the attacker is. Well, if I should discover an antidote, I'm sure that this person would certainly want to be helped. Sick or not, Professor, he'll be obliged to give himself up. I'm a doctor. It's not fair to treat a lycanthropist like a murderer. If ever I'm successful in finding a cure, these poor victims could possibly begin to lead a normal life, like others. Perhaps you're right, if you think murder won't bother his conscience. If you should ever find out that I am the monster. I should like to be treated the same as you would like to be. I understand you perfectly. Phil and Eric here, and you know the movies tonight is Werewolf in, in a, a girl's, girl's dormitory. dormitory. So we snuck down the street to That's a girl's right. dormitory. What are you guys doing here? Oh, I said, hey, we are in the dormitory. Get out. We Get out. We're, we're shopping. We're naked. Who we, are you? Schlockmeister. Hi, everybody. Schlockmeister. Schlockmeister right here. Oh, oh, I, I live in the dorm here with the girls. Right. Uh, uh, I just kind of watch them uh, shower, and <laughs> I protect them from myself. Hey, are there any werewolves in there? Uh, I didn't see a werewolf, but if you see me with my shirt off, you sure want to <laughs> shoot it. Good. There you go. <laughs> That's so, cool. so I'll tell you what, Schlockmeister, what have you got going on That's that you right. can tell us about here? Oh my God, we got so many things come that uh, I haven't come up yet, but <laughs> as soon as I do, I'm going to tell you. No, the Schlockmeister show yeah. is now in its uh, third season, Hi. and uh, if you haven't seen the first two seasons, you're not alone. You're actually... The only person if you've seen it. Uh, but anyway, that's from sh that's at schlockmeister.com, and there's no C in schlock. It's S H L O C K Meister, because that was the cheaper domain name. Hey, there you go. We, uh, we are planning SchlockCon 2 here in the Northeast Ooh. Ohio area. We had a great turnout the first right. time. Good time. Good time. It was a bunch of horror hosts and fans. We right. had memorabilia. We had performances. We had uh, talks and events and panel discussions. You guys were involved. That's right. Uh, but despite that, it was a good event. <laughs> yeah. And literally, we have just created a brand new event. I'm going to be the, maybe one of the first to tell your uh, viewers. That's right. Break it right here. Wood steak. Wood steak. Wood it's an annual event where all the horror hosts from the all Northeast of Ohio area get together for right. one day. One day. And they hug it out. And they yes. love each other, and they yes. get lost in the woods. Not too much of oh, that. Oh, that's too much hugging. Uh, more like an amicable, uh, uh, farther away uh, okay. hugging. Okay, uh, <laughs> platonic. That's, that's good. Platonic. I like that. This, this is, is always a better <laughs> framing. <laughs> I love See, Phil. He always works. works. Camera there. Phil sacrifices himself I'm for the part of the entertainment value yes. of this I'm show. I'm back here. Uh, so yeah. watch for woodstake.com as soon as I can uh, book that on right. GoDaddy. Yeah. And GoDaddy. <laughs> we'll get it And then we'll put it right there. We'll right. Uh, but you guys have been great. You're a great uh, host in the Northeast Ohio area. Right. You always uh, plug everything in right. town. You, you're friends with all the yeah. fellow hosts in right. town. Yes. And everyone loves one of you. And well, yeah. I just want to say... Keep watching the show, guys, because it is going to go big. It's going to go right. national, and then you're going to have to pay a dollar ninety nine on Netflix. Yes. Right. So, <laughs> catch it now for a free while you can. Hey, what about this uh, pilot you're doing? 
Can you I do fly that? planes in my spare time, yes. <laughs> or I do have a pilot light on my stove. Oh, that's what yeah. he is. Uh, I also talking. go to pilot for my gas. <laughs> oh. What pilot are we talking about? Pilot, pilot, pilot for the horror hose. The pilot for the horror hose. You mean the wood stake that wood we talked about three minutes ago? Phil's just no. catching up, folks. What? What's the other pilot? <laughs> what you're working on. <laughs> We don't oh, know, Phil. I wish I knew. <laughs> All right, I'm it's... sure. I'm sure I am working on something. Oh no, I know what he's talking what about. Talking about. There's a reality oh, show yeah, in the works go. featuring these guys. They're about as real as you can get. That's right. We're real. Yeah, we're going to talk Touch all up. about how hard it is to be a horror host in this uh, time yes. of, of it's uh, not a job. It's economic no depression. No and what? Are you sad? Are you? I don't know I'm what he is. <laughs> I kid. I kid. But you know, you if you want to see behind the scenes on what it takes to be a horror host, you're going to want to watch our show. Yes. There's no name for the show yet. We're just pitching it to the reality the show producers in Hollywood. But as soon as we know, we'll let them know. It's called all the right. pitch. To the producers in Hollywood. That's what's called. That's it's, really that's the worst good. title I can I think of for that. But other it's than the we got. Key, I don't know. But anyway, but hey, anyway, on that note, yeah. why don't you guys uh, go back to your movie? I'm gonna, gonna go back say, to the right. dorms. I hear a girl. <laughs> I was say, I'm I, sorry, I, I'm sorry. You, there. you go oh. back to the movie. Bye, guys. I'm with him. I'm going. Okay. With him. I guess going. we're gonna get back into the movie. We're in the girls' dormitory. Bye. Soapy. to do.
He was the monster. He tried to kill Sandy. Enough of that. Miss Leonora, get them all inside. Go on, girls. Enough now. Go on inside. Was he the monster? Perhaps the monster never existed. Walter smothered the girl. Now, please, go on, Tommy. I'm going to call the police. All right. Priscilla. What's happened? Priscilla. It's terrible. Walter killed himself. No. It's true. We caught him by surprise fleeing from the dormitory. After he tried to kill one of the girls. Sandy. Sandy? Yes. So Walter was the monster? No. He couldn't be the monster. But why not? Because Walter had a dog. And dogs can't stand the odor of wolves. This is appalling, Sir Alfred. Yes. It's like a compulsion I have here inside of me. And why am I like this? I don't know why. But I've never killed anybody. I've always paid. I've always paid for everything. Those that seem the best sometimes commit the worst. You know you've killed Walter. No. I only asked him to find the letters. I didn't know he'd be foolish enough to risk his life. You must help me. By helping you, Miss Leonor and I were almost involved in this dirty scandal. If Miss Leonor and I had not discovered the letters, you would be in jail. I'm innocent. Oh, if only Sheena were still alive. But why? Because Sheena, that night, when Mary was killed, she followed me. She saw who it was. Don't invent these absurd stories. There's no need for it. I have no intention of denouncing you. I haven't had a moment of peace since Sheena died. It's as if I had killed her with my own hands. If only I had the courage to kill myself. But Sheena knew. She knew. If she knew, why didn't she speak up? I don't know. Maybe she kept silent to blackmail me. She said that... With one word, she could send me to the gallows. Even the death of your own wife looks strange in the light of this story. Strange? You think that I... I'm not thinking anything. What are you going to do? What will you do? If you destroy me, you destroy yourself as well. Go, Sir Alfred. Why didn't you tell me about Sir Alfred? Because I was afraid. I don't know much about you, Julian. You continue to have secrets. Julian, I know you're a medical doctor. Ah. Oh. Well, then. You must also know that I'm a failure. Julian, is one mistake really so bad? Oh, no. But it's a battle, Priscilla. 
One cannot forget the past when he keeps following you. All right, let's go. There are more important things to be done now. Excuse us, Sir Alfred, but it's very important that we see you. I'm sorry, but I don't have a lot of time to give you. Please. Sir Alfred, I have a, a very delicate question to ask you. Let me assure you, I will tell no one of this visit. But I don't understand, Professor Alfred. I have nothing to hide. You're in bad trouble because of your relations with Mary Smith. How dare you, sir? The letters. Sir Alfred, that is not the point. I want to know exactly what happened that night you met with Mary in the woods. Professor... Are you accusing me? Do you have any proof? I didn't say that. But I wondered if you'd come with me to the police. The police? Yes. I don't doubt your innocence. But there are some facts that have to be cleared up. I don't have to defend myself. You're crazy if you think that you I have... Believe me, don't worry. We don't want a scandal. I know. The facts are all against you right now. But if you have nothing to hide, why are you afraid? All right. Perhaps I was wrong. So we had a relationship, but that's all there was to it. There's no reason to believe that I would murder her. Excuse me, will you, woman, please? I'll go get the letters. And you can see for yourself. Well, what about him? It's a possibility. Because it's a break and oh. not the movie. It's I'm not, happy. It's not this the movie. movie, I can't oh, say it. I'm telling you, folks, this movie is almost done. It. There's been so many. How many times can you murder somebody? And how many red herrings? Oh, let me oh, just tell man. you. You know, and how many times have we seen the werewolf? Ah, <laughs> once, maybe. once. But you know what? The, 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 is it is weird? It, is it, it the girls' dormitory? No. no. Uh, you know what's weird is this. This movie is nothing like the poster for the film of Dex. Uh, no, nothing. nothing you know, you all. expect this rah, big monster that goes rah, and kills everybody. But no, you know, we get Folks, that. if you've you made it this far, good. congratulations. Yes. But anyway, as you see on the table, right That's here, right. On the road to the Lardy Fest, we yes. are going to make a nice little stop in Maslin, Ohio. Maslin. Maslin, Ohio. That's you right. You know what that place is the home of? What's that? Zombies. Zombies, that's they right. Zombies Maslin, out Ohio, there. The Zombie Walk. That's the right. Maslin Zombie Walk. October 11th, 5 p.m. to 10 p.m. or 11 p.m., I believe. It's going to be fantastic. Philly D and I are going to be out mm -hmm. there. Hopefully, old Rob Daniels will join us out there. WrestleMania will be out there. We're going to, and we're going to invade the Zombie right. Walk. And you know what? They're going to do a very special flash mob and the special performance of Thriller. Oh, that's right. 
it's going to be great. We're going to be there with our cameras. We're, We're going to film a show. Out. We're going to film a show. With our movie. Which, well, actually, we... we we're gonna leave it up to you. That's Actually, right. We're gonna leave it up to you, folks. You this, vote this for is it. this is something we just came up yes. with on the spot right here. Yes. You see in movie magic. That's right. You we're know, leave it up history out there on that old Facebook. That's right. Get vote. online. Go to the Facebook page, the Phil and Eric Show, and tell us what movie you want to see. Is it gonna yes. be White Zombie with good old Bella Lugosi? Bella. Or is it gonna be Teenage, teenage Zombies? Zombies. Ooh. So a lot of people would say, Oh, Night of the Living Dead. Well, that's that's, 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 that's our just, quintessential yes, movie. That holds a special place here on the That's Phil cliche, show. though. So we'll, that. We, we've done that. So yeah. let's do something we haven't done. That's right. White zombie or teenage zombie. That's right. We're going to do something great at the Zombie Walk. Check it out on Facebook. And, and this mask is done by a really great artist who wishes to be anonymous right now. But let me tell you something. Pretty good artist. Yes, but you know what? You are gonna have your face. Hey, <laughs> you're gonna have your face done up like a zombie. Like a zombie. It's gonna be cool. It's for a good cause. It's great. It's great. So That's I tell right. you what, folks. And then just uh, I know real quick, WrestleMania. We're getting there. Yes. What, one more. Uh, one more quick plug. Later on in or early in that day. Yes. We are gonna be at the DeBoard Halloween Festival. We're gonna try our best to be there. At we're least have try. a couple of representatives for that. DeBoard Halloween Festival. That's right. It's the 19th year. Yes. 19th and the guy year. that's dressed as Jason's going to be that's there. That's right. Good old Claude DeBoer. Thank ah. you very much. And a uh, big shout out to you. It's going to yes. be at Hardesty Park in Akron, Ohio. Yes. Hardesty Park, October 11th, 2 p.m. to 10 p.m. So right. we're going to try and make it out there before we head down to Maslin. So we're going to we're gonna be dealing with all kinds of Halloween. Good stuff. Uh, good stuff that day. So we're hoping to get some footage out at the DeBoer Halloween Festival. And then we're going to head down on down to the Maslin Zombie Walk. And that same artist who did the zombie also did this one right here. Hey, now! So, that's right. <laughs> I'll tell you what, folks, guess what? I've got some good news for you. What's the good news? This is the final act of the movie. Yes! The yes! The final yes! act of the movie. We're going to take you right now. I'm going to into another. I'm going to play a celebratory dance. Woo! Dance. Come on. Final act of the movie. And that's right. Right back here for guess what? The, the jokes! jokes. So we'll see you right Break it down! Woo. On the Phil and Eric Show! Where every night! It's a Saturday, Saturday night when you're watching a movie! Oh, I can play! We'll be right back! I can play! Here's an interesting one, kiddies. And I think you adults will like it too. There once was an artist named Saint who swallowed some samples of paint. All shades of the spectrum flowed out of his rectum with a colorful lack of restraint. I don't get it. <laughs> now here's one for all you athletic kiddies out there. There once was a young boy named Nick, who by chance was always being kicked. He tried not to fight, for he was smart, kind, and bright. So he learned how to run real quick.
to have a second injection. I know. Oh, darling, please, let us finish the cure now. No. Better that you leave me like this. I wish that you hadn't been late that night. I arrived too late. Probably at that moment, Mary was escaping in the woods and might well have seen me come here. Don't have remorse now. You don't know what I've done. Leonore, you're thinking about Sheena Whiteman. How did you know that? Sir Alfred told me that Sheena knew who Mary's murderer was. I was so frightened. Sheena and Priscilla saw each other in the forest. I saw it through the window. Sheena must have seen you kill Mary that night. You must know I was forced to do it. And she recognized me. Yes. Oh, all the bad I've done. But we must fight back to save you. Because without you, I don't exist. Leonore, the second injection... You know I'm not a murderer. in the guardhouse. So what? And now? <laughs> Listen to that story. Tell us, Pris, is it because you're making time with the professor that you're being so very uppity about it? <laughs> <laughs> Don't listen to her, please. Miss Leonore will not be with you this morning. She had to leave for reasons of her own. You may stay in the park this morning. And tomorrow you'll attend the funeral of Walter. <laughs> Silence! You have no right to judge others. Much less when they are dead. Judgment is for God alone.
The death of his master might have affected him. A beast sometimes is especially sensitive. It's true. Perhaps he feels guilty of Walter's death. I'm going now. What have you seen? I've seen a corpse. It's Walter. What are you saying to me? You're imagining things. No, I've seen it. It's not my imagination. The dog led me to it. Wolf. The dog? I followed him and he took me into the woods. At a certain place it began to dig and uncovered something. It was Walter. You're still in shock from that night. Come inside. I'll get you something to drink. All right. I'll go and phone the police. But if we find nothing again this time, come in. But if the body of Walter is buried in the woods, who could be buried in the cemetery? <laughs> Mr. Swift? Mr. Swift, what are you doing? Can't you hear me?
Leonore. Leonore. I've killed again. You haven't killed Priscilla. I shot you. I had to. It's... It's better this way. Without... Without Leonor, I don't want to live. She... She... She was with me always. Mary Smith in the woods. It looks like I went out and killed her. I don't remember. I hoped it could be cured. I followed your research. I begged Vincent to send you. Leonor. Leonor is in Walter's grave. Is she? We buried in the cemetery. God forgive me. Well, now it's finished. It's a mystery yes. if it's one person that does it. But That's when it right. ends up being like five people. Oh, uh, no. Let me tell you, folks. Right. Makes me want to do the whoop, 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 I know whoop, we're trying to get shuffle. movies. <laughs> so I tell you what, though. You need to get better movies, young man. Uh, well, we, I, tell, I, uh. I, I actually kind of enjoyed it. So I'm nah. sorry about that, folks. But anyway, so what right now we got some jokes for you. We're going right. to go old school. We got some got email the computer. jokes. That's we got right. some email jokes from, uh, That's right. from the old website. That's right. The Maybe. webs? The, the webs. Try right. the, the webs. webs. All right. The webs. www.webs.com. The old website. <laughs> the blue website, you know. Philly, I'll tell you what. Why don't you go ahead with the first joke of the evening. First joke, first joke, first joke. Woo, woo, woo. Right. Okay. First joke All right. of the evening. First joke of the evening is from Carlos Pilarcos. I remember him. He was on New Talent. That's guy. right. He was, he was the barking man. Yeah. That's what right. What did he send to it? I wonder if he still has a mask, by the way. I'm sure he does. All right, here he goes. Carlos asks, why do bicycles fall over? Why do bicycles fall over? Because they're too tired. <laughs> too tired. Oh. All right. Okay, all right. All right. All right. You got to do the next joke. This one's from Little Ernie out in uh, oh, S Street. I don't know where that is. Little Ernie, Ernie in S Street. S <laughs> Street. There you go. Hey, does he have a friend named Bert? I doesn't say, but I don't all know. Right. So anyway, little Ernie, little Ernie says, "Yes. Why do dragons sleep during the day? Why do the dragons sleep during the day? So they can fight knights." Oh. Well, you know, you got some from S Street, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah well, yeah. guess what? I got somebody from another kitty area. Up the block. Oh, he. This no. woman wrote woman. in. She's from. Living Island. The Living Island. That's right. Her okay. name is... Living Island. Yes. Witchy Poo. Witchy Poo. Witchy Poo. Hey, now. Yes. Witchy Poo. Asked. <laughs> it's like something 
get when you sit on a yeah. bird's daughter. Well, she's she's friends. She's friends. <laughs> she's, friends she's friends. Close friends with a guy right, named Puff and Stuff. Ahead, Puff and Stuff. All right. Widget Poop, Poop says, "What did Cinderella say when her photos did not show up?" What did Cinderella say when her photos did not show up? Someday my prince will come. Someday <laughs> my prince will yes, come. Prince. And, oh. and we can print out copies of the Phil and Eric show on DVD. All right. All right. All right. I'll tell you what. Right now I got the next little last joke. You better get it. You better get it. I've got. Okay. Oh boy, this one's bad. This one comes from Little Aiden upstairs. Really? That's awesome. Little, Little Aiden upstairs. All right. Why was the broom late? Why was the broom late? It overswept. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Billy. You know what? Last joke. Last joke. Last joke. Last joke. Okay. All right. Now, uh, this one is from a guy named Alex. Little Alex. Oh, Alex. I think he's upstairs I think he's too. He's from upstairs too. And yeah. he wrote. What part of the car is the laziest? And he loves cars, by the way. That's true, he does love cars. So what part of the car is the laziest? Oh, he writes, the wheels, because they're always tired. That's too tired. Oh, they're always tired. That's too tired jokes. Too tired. Too tired jokes. That's your too tired jokes. That's your too limit. tired I'm cutting tired. it off. So I Cut it off. Folks, thanks so much for joining Sorry. us right here on Sorry, this great movie. Sorry, man, it'll work out. I tell you what, thank you so much yes. for watching the Phil and Eric Show at the right. Phil and Eric Show. Supporting us and helping us out. And I tell you what, hit the right. theme song right, right. now. Bye. Bye. Peace.